Welcome to Victoria Graveyard. Today we're visiting two local cemeteries to remember and celebrate nine remarkable people who are gone but not forgotten. In today's Vancouver Island tour, we'll visit artists, athletes, and heroes. I'd be grateful if you join me. We're starting our tour in the green pastures of Royal Oak Burial Park. In Section W, we find the final resting place of Jim Unger. Born in England, Jim immigrated to Canada in 1968 and started working as a newspaper cartoonist. His unique sense of humor became very popular with readers. His themes included married life, strange neighbors, and animals. Jim called his unconventional cartoon Herman, and it was picked up by 600 newspapers in 60 countries reaching 40 million readers worldwide. A two-time recipient of the National Cartoon Society's Award for Best Syndicated Panel, Jim Unger passed away in 2012, age 75. His memorial stone says he was a loving and generous man. Close by in Section H is the grave of Nellie McClung, Nellie was an orator, author, and reformer who successfully used her brilliant sense of humor in many social justice causes. To name a few, Nellie championed medical care for children, property rights for women, mother's allowances, and equitable divorce laws. She spoke for the rights of Jewish refugees and interned Japanese Canadians during World War II. In 1927, Nellie and four friends known as the Famous Five argued that women should be eligible to sit in the Senate. After the Supreme Court of Canada ruled against them, they finally won the case at the Judicial Committee at the British Privy Council. Nellie is a person of national historic significance, and today her statue stands on Ottawa's Parliament Hill. A mother of five, Nellie Letitia McClung, passed away in 1951. She was 77. She is together forever with her husband, Robert. Next in Section C, we find a pair of remarkable hockey brothers. First, Lester Patrick played defense for many teams, including the Victoria Senators and Victoria Aristocrats. He was known as Les the Silver Fox. He won six Stanley Cups as a player, coach, and manager. In 1926, Lester coached the New York Rangers to the final series. In Game 2, his goalie was injured. Without a backup, Lester put on the goalie pads and said, Boys, don't let an old man down. He stopped 18 of 19 shots and at 44 became the oldest player in finals history. The Lester Patrick Trophy is awarded for outstanding contributions to hockey in the United States and the Western Hockey League's Lester Patrick Cup now resides in the Hockey Hall of Fame, where Lester himself is a member. The namesake of the NHL's former Patrick division, Lester Patrick passed away in 1960 from a heart attack. He was 76. Next to Lester lies his brother Frank Patrick, also a hockey pioneer. Frank was a player, coach, and manager of the Vancouver Millionaires. The Patricks have been dubbed hockey's royal family. They established many rules applied in today's NHL and first introduced numbers on players' sweaters. They created the playoff system, which was copied by many other sports. And in respect of his brother's famous incident, Frank introduced the backup goalie system. Frank is in both the Hockey Hall of Fame and BC Sports Hall of Fame. A big supporter of women's hockey, Frank Patrick also suffered a heart attack and passed away four weeks after his brother Lester in 1960. He was 74. Our last stop at Royal Oak is the Garden of Remembrance, where we'll honor another local hockey legend, Rick LaPointe. Born in Victoria, Rick played for the Victoria Cougars and was named top defenseman in the 1974 World Junior Tournament. He became the first Victoria-born and trained player in 37 years to make it to the NHL. He was drafted fifth overall by the Detroit Red Wings. Known by his nickname Jumbo, Rick retired after an 11-year career and became a beloved coach to Victoria kids. 
He is a member of the Victoria Sports Hall of Fame. A father of three, Rick LaPointe passed away in 1999 from a heart attack. He was 44 years old. Our next stop is the scenic Ross Bay Cemetery. Located in Block F, we find the originally unmarked grave of Billy Barker. Born in England, Billy moved to British Columbia's Caribou region in the gold rush of the mid-1800s. He became an incredibly successful and lucky miner, finding unprecedented amounts of gold. He would eventually discover nearly 40,000 ounces. Billy was a generous man, and he gave away all of his riches. The historic tourist town where Billy hit it big is named Barkerville in his honor, a place where some say his grave should be moved. Billy Barker passed away in 1894, age 75. His memorial plaque says he died poor in wealth, but forever rich in friends. Nearby in Block H, we find the impressive grave of James Douglas. James was chief trader for the Hudson's Bay Company, and he started the northern fur trade in 1821. In 1858, James became the first governor of the colony of British Columbia. He asserted the authority of the British Empire during the gold rush, which contributed to today's border between Canada and the U.S. James is considered by many as the founder of Victoria and the father of British Columbia. There are countless places named after him, including Victoria's James Bay and the Douglas border crossing in Surrey. Knighted by Queen Victoria in 1863, Sir James Douglas passed away from a heart attack in 1877. He was 73. In Block B is the final resting place of BC's first Chief Justice, Matthew Begbie. Matthew traveled throughout the province on foot or horseback to administer justice. He learned a number of indigenous dialects and conducted trials in those languages. Matthew recognized the concept of Aboriginal marriage and allowed people to swear an oath of truth on a sacred object other than the Bible. He further ruled against the discrimination of Chinese Canadians. In 1864, Matthew presided over the murder trial of five Indigenous men and the jury sentenced them to hang. This contributed to his nickname, The Hanging Judge. In 2014, the government exonerated the hanged men and his new Westminster statue was removed per the findings of a reconciliation commission. A Vancouver school and Revelstoke Mountain are named in his honor. Matthew Begbie died in 1894, age 75. His memorial stone says, Lord be merciful to me a sinner. Finally in Block H is Emily Carr's grave. Born in Victoria, Emily was a writer and artist. Inspired by indigenous people, she was one of the first Canadian painters with a modernist style. Despite negative criticism, Emily's original work started receiving recognition around 1927 when her art was exhibited around the world. In 1941, she received the Governor General's Literary Award for her memoir, Clee Wick. In Dear Mother Earth, she wrote, When I die, I should like to be in you uncoffined, unshrouded, the petals of flowers against my flesh, and you covering me up. Several schools are named in her honor, including Vancouver's Emily Carr University. She even has a planet named after her. Emily Carr passed away in 1945, age 73. Today, her grave is adorned with recent gifts of remembrance from her many fans. We'll conclude our tour at a peaceful fountain in Royal Oak Burial Park, a beautiful spot on a warm spring morning. Please leave a comment if you know about those who we visited today. And check out my other graveyard tours celebrating our dearly departed. Thank you for watching this little taste of old Victoria as she once was. I'm Jean-Claude Vancouver, and until next time, be good to the other. <laughs>